How did you ever meet Metchnikov? I had worked under Hamilton. They all wanted to meet me. Oh. Is that why? Didn't you let them know your part in the discovery? Why, if it hadn't been for you, I should never have stumbled upon the thing at all. Oh, I know my place too well for that. Talk about artistic temperament. You scientists are worse than prima donnas. Some, uh, proofs of a monograph I was correcting on the train. Mind hammering those sentences of mine into decent English? You, you can write, I can't. Recent experiments in anterior poliomyelitis by Ernest Hamilton, M.D., Ph.D., and Helen... What? Why, you, you put my name with yours. Well, if you object, like a prima donna... Object? Why, this makes my reputation in the scientific world. Well, didn't you make mine? You can't imagine what this means to me. It's so hard for a woman to get any recognition. Most men have but one use for us. If we get interested in anything but them, it's unwomanly. They call it a fad. But they've got to take me seriously now. My name with Ernest Hamilton's. But then you see, you are a very exceptional woman. Why, you have a mind like a man. Like a man? If you had a mind like a woman, you would know better than to say that to me. Well, they all take for granted that I want to make love to you. Well, you took for granted that I wanted you to. You're about the most conceited man I ever knew. Well, how can I help it when you admire me so? I admire you. You're always telling me what great things I'm going to do, stimulating me, pushing me on. Why, after you left, everything went to slump. Tell me, why did you leave? Was I rude to you? Did I hurt your feelings? None the least. It was entirely out of respect for your feelings. My feelings? Oh, I see. You got it into your head that I wanted to marry you. Men sometimes do. I suppose they do. It's been known to happen. Talk about conceit. Well, you needn't be afraid. I'll, I'll never ask you to marry me. You can't imagine what a weight that takes off my mind. Yes, it's, it's as if a veil between us has been lifted. Suppose we talk about our work. Yes, our work. Let's drop the subject. Look at the moon. Hmm. Seriously, you promise never to mention the subject again? I promise. Then I'll go to Paris with you. What's that? Why, Dr. Metchnikoff, he promised me he would invite you. Yes, but... Don't miss out the chance of a lifetime. No, but you can't come. If you need me, I can, and you just said... You mustn't come to Paris with me. Don't you want me with you? What? I am a man, and you are a woman. What of it? Are you one of those small men who care what people say? No, that's not your reason. What is it? You must tell me. It's only for your sake. Think of all I have done for your sake. You wouldn't be going yourself but for me. I was the one to see you needed it. I proposed it to Metchnikoff. I urged him, made him ask you, for your sake. And now am I to be left at home like a child because you don't care to be embarrassed with me? Oh, please, that is so unfair. I, I, I simply can't take you now. You are all alike. You pile work upon me until I nearly drop. You play upon my interest, my sympathy. You get all you can out of me, my youth, my strength, my best, and then, just as I, too, have a chance to arrive in my profession, you, of all men, throw me over. I hate men. I hate you. And I love you. I've done it. I've done it. I knew I'd do it. No, I did it. Forgive me. I... I had to do it. Oh. And this spoils everything. No. It glorifies everything. I have loved you from the first day you came and looked up at me for orders. I, I, I didn't want you there. I, I didn't want any woman there. I tried to tire you out with overwork, but I couldn't. I tried to drive you out by rudeness, but you stayed. And that made me love you even more. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. Don't, don't love me. <laughs> Why? I, I never knew there could be women like you. I, I, I thought... Women were, were merely to be wanted and, and worshipped, petted and patronized. But now, why, I love everything about you. Your wonderful, brave eyes that face the naked facts of life and are not ashamed. Those beautiful hands that toiled so long, so well, 
so close to mine and not afraid. Not afraid! You mustn't. I am afraid now. I made you say it. I have always wanted to make you say it. I have always sworn that you shouldn't. Because you cannot care enough? Enough. Too much. You love me. It is because I love you that I didn't want you to say it. Only I did. It is because I love you that I went abroad to stay. Only I couldn't. I couldn't stay away. Oh, do you know how I love you? No, you're only a man. Every day there in that laboratory in your apron, that dear apron which I stole from your locker <laughs> when you left me, when you asked for orders, did you know that I wanted to say, love me. Every day when you took up your work, did you ever guess that I wanted to take you up into my arms? Why didn't you? Oh, thank God I didn't. For a while we worked there together. I, I came to know you as, as few other men ever know the woman they desire. Women can be more than sex, and a man is more than sex. And all this makes man and woman not less but more overwhelmingly desirable and necessary to each other. And it makes both things last, not for a few years, but forever. What have we done? <laughs> this is all moonlight and madness. Tomorrow comes the clear light of day. And we'll still love each other tomorrow. But we cannot marry then or any other tomorrow. Can't? What nonsense! I have slaved for you all these months, not because I wanted to win you from your work, but to help you in it. And now, after all, shall I destroy you? No. No. I love you. You love me. Nothing else matters. Everything else matters. I am not a little debutante to be persuaded that I am needed because I am wanted. I haven't played with you. I have worked with you, and I know. Think of Theodore. Think of Lucy. And now poor little Jean marry you. Never. You mean your career? My career. No. Yours. Always yours. Then that for my career. I, I, I'll go back to private practice and make a million. That's what I said you do. Just what you must not do. Your work is needed by the world. You are my world. I need you. But there is no love without marriage, no marriage without money. We can take it or leave it. Can we leave it? No. I can't. You can't. Come. Why should we sacrifice the best? Come. So this is what marriage means. And I cannot marry you, Ernest. You cannot do without me, Helen. Come. You have been in my arms once. You and I can never forget that now. We can never go back now. It's all or nothing now. Come. I shall not woo you against your will. But you are coming to me because by all the powers of earth and heaven you are mine and I am yours. <laughs>